Welcome everyone. This is the Molecular Models Lab for Virtual Learning. This is the Honors Chem version. We will be investigating the different 3D shapes of molecules by building them virtually. Um, you will need to print out um, either this piece of paper or draw everything on a separate piece of paper. Please don't insert individual pictures for each one. Just kind of upload a whole big picture and you are watching this screencast tutorial right here right now. So for the first part we're going to visit the um, FET simulator where we're looking at our molecular shapes. So click on this link like so. You'll see another window is going to open up. I highly suggest that you do a Duale's 50-50 split so that you can maximize what you see in here. You might have to minimize uh -huh, um, your screen a little bit so that you can see all the directions and the cues that are in here. But it says to click on the play button, which is our little play button over here, and choose the model, not real molecules, choose the models right here. And then it says click molecular geometry, electron geometry, and show bond angle. So this is your molecule geometry, electron geometry, show bond angle. And the cool part is, is that this thing spins around and you can manipulate it in all different ways, look at it from all different angles. So it's almost like having it right there in front of you. And in the upper right hand corner, you can uh, decrease bonds, number of bonds, or increase number of bonds like so. And then you can delete what you need and it automatically puts everything there for you. <clears throat> and then it has you walk through by adding one atom to uh, each of your substances at a time, um, showing what the angles look like, looking at the difference between a trigonal planar and adding a lone pair in here and seeing it become a pyramid instead. I really like that angle and being able to see it and what those two differences are. So here you have the bond angles of 109.5 versus 120 pyramid versus a plane. Oh, it's so cool. So this walks you through that whole part. Um, part two has you check uh, to restart this over here and um, go through your different numbers of lone pairs and seeing how that changes your angles. But every time, make sure that you click on the molecular geometry the electron geometry and showing the bond angles so you can see the differences between one and or two lone pairs in there and reset the button for the third one you're going to add two um, two double bonds and you can see what that geometry compares to with your single bond one voila like so and then we are going to go through here and uh, open up the build a molecule now drag it over to this window so that you can do your part four uh, quite easily with your um, different bond angles this is taking a moment to load here but again you hit the play button we're going to go to the single part so single and then you have to build water as it says okay so it says water down here h2o the structural formula and then you can use your vesper geometries um, from above to write down the bond angle and the shape if you don't remember and you are to click on the 3d button so you can see this the ball and stick uh, portion by clicking on this and I'll show you exactly what we're doing right here. Okay, so first thing We are doing is we are building water. So water is H2. So we add two H's. Oh, that's just hydrogen all together H2 Oh, I have to break it apart and then add my H's together and that gives me water if you click on 3d It'll show you what it looks like three-dimensionally and it spins around my lovely little Mickey Mouse molecule here for you. 
if you click on this, this is your ball and stick so that you can actually see what it looks like for you to draw what you see on the other side. Now in school, I would be having you use um, uh, different colors of color pencils. If you don't have different color color pencils or you're just writing in one color, that's fine. But that is your H2 and your O. And we know that that is a bent shape of 104.5 degrees. All right. And once you have finished with that, then you exit it out and come over here and put it in the water collection. And then we are to build the rest of the stuff. So we have our oxygen, like so. So it says molecular oxygen. Make sure you click the 3D and you can see the double bonds there. So I would come over to my lab and I would draw um, oxygen, double bonded to oxygen, like so. And this is a linear shape of 180 degrees. And then I would come back to my lab and put it in the molecular oxygen spot. Then I have hydrogen, putting that together. Look at the 3D version. You can see the difference between the space filling model and ball and stick model putting that into its collection area. Now we have carbon dioxide. So we have carbon, oxygen, oh, that's carbon monoxide. And then we have another oxygen. Hmm, nothing's happening here. It won't let me put it in this spot. So let's break it apart and see if we can get it to bond another way. No, nope, still doesn't work. Still doesn't come in here. So let's break it apart and try a different way. Carbon, oxygen, oxygen. Ah, carbon is our central atom here. It is a double bonded, double double bond, like so. And you can come over here and put your carbon dioxide in its proper spot like so, and then make your nitrogen as well. Nitrogen is a triple bond. Ooh. Space filling, you can't tell that it is that way, but in the molecular one, you can, all right? And once you've built your nitrogen, you have completed that. You don't have to make the next collection, but if you would like to, you can. There's many collections to make, um, but that's all that is required for this lab. Then for the last part, part five, you're going to click on the home button down at the bottom. Instead of going to multiple, you're going to go to playground, and you're going to build a molecule for each of these. So first we have ammonia, so that is N, and then we have three H's. And notice, if you don't put the H in the correct spot, it won't bond. So yes, it attaches like so. Okay, make sure you do the space filling one. This is that tetra, a trigonal pyramid shape. All right, and you can come over here and draw your nitrogen. Oops, nitrogen is blue. Nitrogen, come on, you can do it. And you have your hydrogens like so. All right, and if you want to double check, you can uh, see that it matches up like so. You can always pause it and adjust it if you want to adjust your picture so that you can make it look a little bit nicer and neater. Mine was a little little rash there. And this is your trigonal pyramid, which is a shape of 109.5, a little less than that. And then you can go through and work your way through uh, methane and your dihydrogen sulfide, which is pretty easy. Then you have your carbon tetrachloride. So as you can see, there is no 
um, sulfur or chlorides on this page, so you have to click through until you find your your uh, your atoms that you need. So carbon tetrachloride would look like so. That's trichlororadical. So there's carbon tetrachloride, making sure that they match. And then you have your um, space filling, which chlorines are much bigger than the carbon. And then you have your ball and stick model. You can always pause it and position it so that you can best uh, draw it. Then we have dichlorodifluoromethane, so two chlorines, two fluorines. So you can break this apart, put some chlorines back, and add some fluorines instead. See how that works out for you? Dichlorodifluoromethane. Beautiful. You can see the space filling. And then we have our ethane. So you can reset that. Uh, you can draw ethane. That's C2H6. Yeah, we can draw it from this bucket. So we have those two here. One, two. Oh, that's acetylene, like in a torch. Three, four, five. Six, there's ethane, yay! All right, so there's our ethane, ball and stick model. So we have a CH3 and a CH3, ever so nicely. Then we have urea, that's our main component of urine. Let's see if we can put that together. We need one carbon, one oxygen. NH2 taken twice. That means I'm going to need two NH2. So NH2, and then I have an NH2, and then I have a carbon and an oxygen. So let's say urea, voila. This is what urea looks like. It loves to be symmetrical, Mother Nature. So, ooh, double bond here. Interesting. So it looks like that. And then we have to make our butane, C4H10, like a butane lighter. There are not four carbons here, so we can't use this one. So we have to come over to this one where there are four carbons. Two three, four, and then we add our hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is our N-butane, our normal butane. You can see the lovely little caterpillar-looking-esque substance that it is. Beautiness. You can even push pause and draw it. And there is a second way to build butane. And that is going to be if you unbond it and try for another way to put your carbons together. Aha, we can make them into a T-shape now. Well, it actually makes more of a Y shape than a T shape, but you get the idea. There's our Y. And that is a different, it's an isobutane, like isopropyl alcohol. Iso is a position off of the central carbon atom, like so. And that is your second isomer of butane. And that is it. No conclusion is needed. Um, you don't have to do this chromofluoro. Bromochlorofluoromethane. I will delete that because there isn't a kit that it works for. So that is our molecule lab. Enjoy.